right. What's up, everybody? This track has me going right now. Flying right along. What's going on, everybody? It's Saturday. Who was first today? Luminous Cloud. What's up, nerd? That's what he said. Ben Colts is back. Acid Bat is here. Future World Machines. Martin Crockett. Arsene Martinet. Dallin Reeves. Is that a new name? Welcome. Josh Holiday. Nice to see you again. Eric Emery in the Dominican Republic. Love and Human Beats from Catalonia. Juan Alzina Bilbeni, welcome. Nice to have you here for the first time. Stereo Decor is back. What's up, Morgan Kitsis? Did I say Sean Hudson? I'm going to say it again because he's asking, is it techno or electro today? It's very obviously techno today. That's right. Scrolling down the list. Don't want to miss anybody. I know I'm going to miss somebody. Jan Kalinowski is here. Aaron303 is here. Felipe Barbosa. Data Rebel. That's most of you. Sorry if I missed you. Welcome, everybody. It's Techno Saturday here on 343TV. My name is John Selway. Happy to be back after a short break. I uh, had some family stuff to do last week. So for those of you who might have been wondering, I think I saw something in the chat about wondering why there wasn't a stream last week and that is why so yeah you know what we do here it's 343 labs music production school in new york in berlin we do our music production we do our synthesis and sound design which is what i do a lot and uh, mixing and mastering and music theory songwriting arranging composition recording all of that stuff we cover a lot of stuff and if you're in the states you're in new york you can come see us in person if you're in Berlin, you can come see us in person. We've got our online courses. We do private lessons in person and online. We've got all this content here on YouTube. We have our Discord. I have a channel on Discord. It's the feedback, the Selway feedback channel. And um, we've been every now and then we have a guest and we do feedback sessions. The next one, which I've been talking about for a little while, next week, March 25th, we've got. Carl Finlow, the one and only Carl Finlow. He's an electro legend. Uh, he's been a guest before. He's a great guy to hang out with and nerd out about music production with and electro. And he's going to be here. Uh, we're going to listen to submissions uh, and, uh, yeah, just give you feedback, uh, both positive and negative. We won't pull punches, but we'll be nice about it, right? Constructively critical is, is the way I like to think about it. So if you want to take part in that, there's a Discord link in the description. Sometimes it doesn't get updated, but I personally copied and pasted myself the current Discord invite link, so it better work. And uh, look for the Selway Feedback Channel under Events. That is where you're going to post. Uh, like a SoundCloud link would be ideal for whatever you're working on. It doesn't have to be a finished track. You could just be a beginner. You could be more experienced. Whatever it is. It's but as long as it's electro, right? It's an electro feedback session. Um, that's the place to do it. Try to get it in there by Friday the 24th. I can't promise we're going to get to everybody. It depends on how long we can stay on, right? But, um, you know, like if 100 people submit tracks, we're probably not getting through all of it. So I'll just say the sooner you, you submit, the better. It'll give us more time to go through it and uh, check out everybody's submissions so we can pick the ones that we're going to focus on. And uh, that's it. Hopefully... We'll get some really great submissions from you guys who are watching today. If you're into electro and you're working on your craft and you want to get better, uh, we're here for you. Right. So today I have a special guest. You've seen him before. You probably heard of him. <laughs> he and I go way back. Uh, we've been making records since the nineties and, uh, sort of a last minute decision to, to hang out on the stream with me today. We had an idea of something we could do. So I want everybody to welcome Mr. Christian Smith. How's it going? Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's going good. <laughs> got, the week, got the weekend off and I got to hang out with you. So all good. Yeah, all good. So we were, um, we, you are such a busy DJ, producer, label owner. You're traveling all the time. And, you know, we... We, we don't always get to work together as often as we'd like. Are you making espresso over there? What is that? 
It's probably switching <laughs> itself off. Give me three seconds of machine. No, it's okay. It sounds like techno. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing today, actually. We're going to sample Christian's espresso machine and make some really hard, industrial, noisy techno. That's what we're going to do today, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we, you know, so, but we're fortunate to still be able to connect online wherever we are. You're in, uh, you're at home, uh, and I'm in New York. And yeah, so we've been working on some new stuff, but we're also, you know, revisiting some of our previous releases so why don't you why don't why don't you say a little bit about what, what we're going to do today exactly i mean like basically i was just going through uh, the tronic catalog um, a few days ago and i was listening to some of our older releases but not too old i mean like when i say older four to ten years ago like nowadays was, was, that's like when, an eternity there's so much music out Exactly. But for us, it's like, yeah, we've been in this business for 30 years. So, so, so basically I found a release that we, we made around, I think six years ago and it came out five years ago and I listened to it and I thought, wow, if we just modernize this a little bit and sped it up by even more than 10 BPM, it needs to be sped up by a lot. These could be very current tracks and very good tracks and it could have a, a second life per se you know, to, to give a new generation um, our sound that we made uh, quite, quite a few years ago. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going we're gonna to revisit this track. We're going to modernize it uh, so that we can release it again if you want to. If we want to, right. So, yeah, yeah we're, 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 it's also just an opportunity to hang out, right? Of course. Of course. <laughs> and, and do what we like to do. So... Yes. Um, I'm just going to check in with the chat a little bit before we dive in of to course. see what people are talking about. There's, I just want, I also want to welcome, there's a lot of new viewers to this uh, stream, um, because we are also simultaneously streaming to your Facebook page. So a bunch of your followers are on here for the first time. I just want to say welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And hopefully, you know, you'll stick around in the future for, uh, for Techno Saturdays. Uh, you can find us, uh, on 343 Labs on YouTube. So anyway, there were some questions here. Someone was asking Already. about the, uh, the, well, no, not about us. So just in general, okay. I just want to make sure we get to some of these things before we dive in. I don't want to of miss course. them. Of Eric course. Emery was asking what track it was in the beginning. I played two techno tracks. Um, the kind of, the countdown track was an unreleased track of mine called Suspension. Very dark, kind of trippy kind of a track. And then the the track when we for for the opening of the show is one of Christian and my older tracks called Giant, which is one of my yeah. favorites. It's it's powerful. I really like that. It has a lot of energy. Yeah, it's just good fun. Yeah, and I don't know. Like I was thinking about it. Like this whole idea of taking an older track and refreshing it. Um, like we I listened to Giant and okay, it doesn't sound like it was produced now, right? It has a different mix. The kick drum's different. But like, it's still effective. Like, totally. Does there any? To does it need to be updated? Even like, why not just leave it the way it was? Because it was good when it was out you know, originally, right? Well, um, uh, you know, I have my my opinion about that. I I feel that we should always use current technologies to do as good as possible. You yeah. Know, to, as as clean or as powerful or as distorted, wh whatever it is. To, to, to produce your music to the best level possible. Um, I, I'm not a fan of trying to sound old because <laughs> right. I am, I've been doing this for a long time. So, so you know, if we, if I go back, I wouldn't want to re-release re something just like, just for the hell of it. If I would do that, I would try to rework it that is a, a right. bit edgy and a bit bit more current and as, okay. as good as possible. So it's, it's like, kind of like remastering but a little beyond right it's not a full-on remix what we're talking about today it's like um exactly just an, an update yeah and it's kind of and it's it but it's like you could have it remastered and make it sound bigger and louder and deeper but like it's a little it's a little more than that it's like tweaking individual sounds to kind of it, it's all i mean it's a little of rewriting history in a way but i'm not against that i, I think it's fun to, i like doing this so um, let's see. There's another unrelated to that uh, about the feedback session next week with with Mr. Finlow. 
Uh, Luminous Cloud asks, if I mentioned SoundCloud for sharing. Are we okay with Dropbox links? Yeah, Dropbox links are okay if you don't have SoundCloud. If you don't want to use SoundCloud, we'll deal with that. I, that's no problem. And there's already a few tracks submitted over on, on, the, on the channel in Discord, so that's good to see. Thanks for that. And um, Luminous Cloud is just pointing out here, his first Tronic vinyl he purchased was Brian Zentz, Speaking in Numbers. Nice one. Yeah, that's a good one. And where is Brian it Zentz is. now? Well, he dropped out of the scene quite a while ago. He, I don't know. I don't know why. Um, he's more into um, graffiti and, and, and other arts. Okay, so, visual so, arts. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So, you know, that's the industry he's in now. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, yeah. But I, I still talk to him from time to time. Very nice guy. I've worked with him a lot. And yeah, I really respect him. Yeah, definitely. Like some of his tracks were pretty like, I mean, he, his mixes and his sound back then was really polished, really good. Yes, yes. So he, always, he was always good yes. at, at doing that. So, all right, let's, let's move into uh, Ableton Live. And, uh, well, where did you go? Christian just disappeared. <laughs> no, it's you the, got, there you are. The, something happened with the... Um, Something happened with the, uh, um, with the video. I can move this. I can move the computer. No, I'll, I'll no fix it. I swear to God, we did this already. Well, Christian's taken uh, over my whole computer. Look at this. No, no, don't move. Don't move. Go back to where okay, you were. Okay, I won't. Yeah, I won't. Go back to where you were. This is great. This is where it becomes like a comedy routine, and it's a it's a comedy of errors. <laughs> All right, live OBS editing. And let's reduce the size. That's better. Now we can actually see what's going on. That was weird. I, we set this up before the stream. Why did that happen? OBS freaking out. All right. Um, so let's take a listen to this so people know what's what we're working with here. And this is pretty much... Well, basically, this was... Um, the original. Yeah, a track that came out on a single, and it was a third track. So that arguably the least important track of the single, but I really like it. And right. I think this could fit very well into, a, let's say, the raw techno style right now. And um, assuming we update it. Right. So I was a little worried, you know, this project file was from 2017. It's not that long ago, but you know how you load, This is, I've talked about this on the stream before, you load up old projects and they don't, you're missing instruments, you're missing samples, thing, things don't work, plugins get updated, live gets confused about where the plugins are, and it, you know. So when I originally loaded this up, a bunch of the drums were missing. Okay. And um, there's actually even an instance of reused battery for this. And if you go in here, you can actually, you can see right there, some plugins are disabled. Please click here to see more details. I mean, but, but you know what? It's, yeah. It sounds pretty good to me. So even well, I'm I, not. I'm, I'm not I'm, there yet. I'm explaining why it sounds pretty good okay. to you. So you, it's okay. like live is unable to find battery four. Weird. Why? Because it's installed on my system. But sometimes I've seen this before with native instruments and other plugins where they'll do new versions especially with vsds sometimes it won't it just won't see the new version it'll think it's a different plugin and it won't reload it and i don't know why but we were lucky so we would have lost that percussion or i would have had to reconstruct it but we're lucky because we were smart enough this time to create audio stems of all of the tracks back then I think everybody should do that. Right, and that's why I'm pointing tracks. this out. I know I realize I'm inter yeah. in interrupting the music here, but like that's one of the things I just wanted to point out to everybody is like a workflow thing is so you don't you as to future proof let's say your music. Every time you finish a song, whether it's released or not, bounce audio of everything that's in MIDI or even just everything with effects, right? That way if for some reason your computer crashes, your hard drive dies, the plugins don't work. You still have all your individual parts, so you can maybe do remixes of it. Maybe you need to fix the mix later when it gets released, that kind of thing. So yeah, we got saved this time. I was able to find the stems for 
these miss that for the missing battery drums and drop them in here. Um, cool. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? <laughs> yes, Christian, let's get started. <laughs> I, 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 I don't like to be, to all of you listening to this, I don't like to beat around the bush. You know, no, you're, all, I, you're always pushing me. You're always like, okay, next, <laughs> next, next. Let's yeah, do it. It's like, what to do, you know? So, all right, what do we want to do to, like, what's the first thing we need to change? Uh, I would say the BPM. How fast was the original? 128. Give it 10 BPM. All right. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny how it's funny how everything is cyclical. I mean, in the late '90s, techno was between 136 and 142. It got fast. And, and now and it's yes, fast. And, then and, it got and, slow. And, and now it's fast again. I mean, like there's another. I wouldn't even call it techno scene. Or, you know, it's more like hardcore scene almost, where there's 150, 160 BPM. But a lot of the more serious techno, underground techno, is around what it was in the late 90s. It's the same speed, 136 to 140. So 138, I think is good. And you, just listen to it now. Right, well, that's the thing now, like the groove Sounds is gonna fine, change right? now because it's yeah. like speeding it up though, it makes it a little busier. Yes, and, and I think what we have to do next is go into the synth. Okay, what, what do we... I would say- You hear what just happened? Oh yes. So that you know that this is another workflow thing. I brought in these stems, right? But they're not warped. So they in the original tempo they were correct, right? We were 128. So we can hear where that hi-hat comes in. That's what it's supposed to sound like. So now I got to go in here and um Take these audio clips and turn warping on, right? That's just a problem because we had to bring in the stems. I saw some comments yeah. of people saying 138 is the right tempo for now. Yeah. I agree. I think 138 for techno is, is a good speed. And It's not I'm too not fast. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. When it's too fast, you lose the groove. I, and I feel like, let's say if you anything above 140, Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to maintain a good groove, in my opinion. You know, everybody has their own opinions, but that's just like for Tronic, for example, I barely ever sign anything that's uh, 140 or higher. It's okay. just, I, it just doesn't work for me. Well, that's good to know for anyone out there who dreams of being released on Tronic. <laughs> now you know. All right, let's try this again. Let's see if the, uh, if the warping worked out. And, you know, we need to be careful because like the warp, Speeding it up is going to change the sound of it a little bit. So it seems to be okay on the ride cymbals. Actually, I haven't sped it up yet. Let's. Yeah, we need to clean up the mix a bit. Like, for example, the, the open hi hat is very long. Yeah. How are we going it, to. It's I, an I, audio, I would, I would, though. How are we going to fix that? We might have to replace it. Okay. Then we, we, we replace it and we put a, like, okay. a shorter open hi hat, I think. All right, now it's working. The hi hats are at the right. Tempo. Let's get these return channels out of the way. There's a track here that I think we didn't use. It's like a little... Uh, Sounds like a 606 Tom. Yeah, it was muted. I'm pretty sure we got rid of it. Pretty sure we got rid of it. Hmm. So you want to look at the synth. Yes, maybe we make the make the notes a bit shorter because they're quite full, huh? Kind of, but like I'm using this arpeggiator to reduce the length of the 16th notes, but maybe we need to check out what's happening to the sound. <laughs> look what we look what we called the the, the sound. Very nice. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> much appreciated. Completely forgot. That must have been a joke, and I don't even know why anymore. It's only been yeah, yeah. how many? Six, seven years? 
You're just mad at me. It's okay. I was probably mad at you because <laughs> we were fighting over a kick drum again. <laughs> no, not anymore. No, we don't do that. Okay. We, so, yeah. We actually used to get into fights, John and I, when we, when we were sitting in the studio all hung over in our 20s. <laughs> we were discussing, you know, the length of a Hyatt or like... The tiniest six, uh, things, right? You're getting into fights over 808... Um, ride or 909 ride the stupid stuff like that but you know what mm -hmm. when you're passionate when you're passionate you know nothing wrong with having no, your it, with your strong opinions it all it all worked out obviously <laughs> so you think it sounds too full i mean too long it's 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 really short already um i mean that's really that's short. short yeah that's too short that's too short i, I would, might have been I automating this i'm not sure I, w I would prefer a little bit shorter. It's just, it'll be cleaner in the mix zone, you know? There's another thing that's affecting that is I've got some reverb on it and it's being automated. You see this? Yes. So it's like adding a reverb. Where's that reverb? That's without the reverb. I like that reverb. But I wonder if yeah. it... Yeah. Oh yeah, the rising sound. Okay, the gated thing. Um, but it's kind of muddy. Because we have a lot of stuff going on in the bottom, right? Let's, so yeah, I wonder I, like I if we leave that reverb, out. yeah, especially because it's faster, there's less space for sound because yes. things are yes. happening faster. So maybe um, yeah. if we brighten it up, thin it out a little bit. So yeah, sometimes you do want to EQ your your uh, effects. Right, that's going to help clean up the lows a little bit. Yeah, that's good. The kick, I think, is good. Actually, no. C c it's one of these the kick? kicks that has the reverb in it. It's, like the, it's in the sample. Which is fine, but can you can you um, com compress it? Uh, no, actually, we need to EQ it. Yeah. And add add a bit of um, mid upper mid. Like it punchy. Needs to be a, a little bit more punchier, yes. Yeah. Well, it sounds cool with that reverb in the break there. Part of what will yeah. help is, I mean, do we want that rumble or not? We 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 keep it because it's part of the original and it works fine with the with the melodic sequence. Okay. Because this track is not about the bass line, but it's more about the synth sequence that we have. Okay. So this you know, this rumble just, it, it does the job. I'm I'm generally not a big fan of rumble bass anymore because it's been overdone, but we made this track, you know, six years, five, six years ago. So back then it was cut, cutting edge. <laughs> oh so yeah. More of that. That's, that's, be that's better, yes. I mean, yes. that seems like an extreme boost but it no but it kind of yeah, needs it, it it punches through better and 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 from what i remember yes no I, I, yeah i've used this kick drum many many times yeah we went from fighting over kick drums to using the same kick drums over and over again no it's because we finally would agree on one yeah that, that, that's another thing i have to say about you john when I worked with John on music, oh. every track he's we getting made, back at me for naming that preset no, no, no. Christian the Psycho. <laughs> no, but every track we made needed to have a different... everything new songs. Yeah, yeah. everything new no, kick drum. I've learned. New I've learned everything. Everything new. Every track. But you know what? I learned a lot. I learned so much. You know, so I'm not complaining. Nope. Oh, much kick is much better now. It's sharper, right? Yes. Yes. Now, much better. another way to handle that, because I'm, I'm. The EQ sounds okay, but we could, you know, and it's a more contemporary thing to use stuff like transient designers and things like that to like and make it pop a little bit more. That's another way to handle it. I mean, I just want to try it. Yes, we yes. could just leave it with the EQ like that, but like also using, um, where is that one? It's a plug-in. We got- Also uh, keep, keep in mind that we got to make it sound good, but we also need to fix the arrangement. Oh yeah, because, we don't want to go too crazy, I, right? Because I, um, no, because what we should say. I find that the underground, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. The underground techno guys are just like the EDM techno guys. 
What? Uh, people, yeah, people have oh, very low fighting th- words. People have very <laughs> low low attention spans these days. All right, these days. So the tracks need to be very dynamic, and they need to change very fast. We, it's funny. I was looking. We already. This is a shorter version. We made the, the unreleased version of this is got like a minute longer or a half, 30, 40 seconds longer, and then uh, we already know. trimmed it down. So you think we should make it even shorter? How 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 long is the track? I'm just um. It's like five and a half, almost six minutes. If you no, yeah, it's like five and a half minutes, right there. Okay, that that's okay. That's okay. Okay, I mean, like so most, maybe most, maybe we don't. No, maybe we don't. But but these days, I try to make my tracks. Most of my tracks are like five minutes, mm-hmm. five thirty max, because um yeah, people get bored. You need to like do, do very dynamic arrangements and and have fast changes, and <laughs> and it's the same with the commercial people as with underground people, uh-huh. and um. It's yeah, it's it's very interesting because the, you know the underground people always say, "Oh, I'm too cool for school." You know what I do is better than you, but are they exactly, all like that? They're exactly the, yeah, oh, ma- most on. of them are yeah, but they're exactly the same as the commercial EDM guys. You know they 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 need a change fast. Strong opinions. You can always count no, on no, that for Christian that, Smith. That, that that's why you see Ben Sims mixing you know um, a, a new track every two minutes. Attention span. I mean, I think it goes beyond. Oh, that too, of course, of course. That's Genre. just a style. That's a style. No, but I'm just saying, you know, we uh, people need to be, people need to make more dynamic arrangements with faster changes these days. As can you hear what I'm doing before. to the kick drum? I'm changing the subject. Can you hear what I'm doing to the kick drum? I put I put yes. the transient shaper on. You hear it? It's like more snappy. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's that better. kind of thing. That's what I'm talking about. It doesn't. It might. Can... It's not necessarily EQ. You don't necessarily need to get like certain frequencies higher but i can reshape it a little bit and make that click come out in a more even kind of a way kick is good now let's move on kick is good all right well let's hear it in the mix you got that's how we'll really know oh look it's a big difference big difference let me go back a little bit there's no transient shaper now it's knocking. I might have overdone it a little bit and pull it back slightly. Yes. That's usually what happens with transient shaping. You do it and it sounds cool, and then you listen to it in the mix and you're like, uh, and you pull it back. Too much. Yeah. But this is good, man. It's also pulling the rumble back a little bit, which is good. Fine. Okay. What else needs to be adjusted? I mean, the level of the kick is good. Doesn't need to be louder. I don't know. I, like I, level I, of the drums. I feel that we should listen to the track from the beginning and okay. go through step by step and see what needs to be done with the arrangement. And the same goes for the sounds. Okay. If we need to change anything. All right. Whoa, what just happened? Sorry. I already like the brighter reverb. It's cleaner. This is a bit like Steve Ahmad's track, Steve Ahmad's style, if you think I, about it. Yeah, no, I think it's. Rachmad, a little bit of Rob Hood, yes. Detroity minimal influences here. Yep, which totally. I am proud to say I I love that music. Same here. Yes. That low, you hear there's right before the 909 hi hats came in. It's one of these hi hats is kind of busy, right? I don't know. If uh, I'm I'm fine. I don't find any. I, right now, I don't find we need to change anything. Okay. The height sound crisp and tight. Hmm. You the were saying the nine oh nine doesn't sound good. Sounds like. Like a bit crushes on it or something. It's the warping. It's the time compression. So that's yeah, what we gotta. We'll have doesn't to figure that out. All right. So we have to see how we can tighten up those hi hats. The ride's okay. R- ride a little loud, maybe. Yes, too loud. Oh, 
All right. But this part's okay. So far, so good. I think the break is too long already. Also, not sure now. I thought it was going longer, but no. no that was okay. the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, this is okay. I find that uh, the main synth is a bit too loud as well. Maybe turn it down by like two dB. This guy. Yes. Forgot about that little like kind of bells, like metallic percussion in there in the back. Cool. But bringing down the main synth, which is quite bright, helped that come out a little bit more. This is nice right here. Yes. Rolling. Yes. Is this the main break? Can you make it smaller so you can see the whole thing? I oh, don't know. No. Okay, it's short. It's good. Yeah. Nice. But the open high we need to replace. Okay. Yes, is there another there's another synth behind the main synth right now. Can, can, can you solo that? The the the, the droning one? It, it sounded like an up it sounded like a like a really fast ah we need that takes up a lot of space. So, so I think we should we I think we I think we should we should tighten it up a little bit. Alright, so this is a very drony sound with a lot of reverb on it, and then it's running through a gate. See right there? So it's going from sustained to chopped with the the gating effect and the auto pan. And then it gets as it, it as the build comes up, it gets full again. There's the riser. That's just pitch bending up. Where's the automation? There it is. Huh. It might just be pitch bend, like MIDI pitch bend. I don't have any automation for the pitch. So, yeah, we, to make that sound less full is 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 a multiple things we got to play with. Let's hear it in the mix again. Turn down the reverb, no? Well, that's what it sounds like without the reverb. It's like the whole oh, sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, then maybe it's just volume as well. Yeah, I feel like EQ, in this case, EQ and lowering the volume, making it less bright, maybe. Like we and, can and shelf are, some are, of this high frequency. And maybe a sidechain? That's going to... Gonna, oh, right. Is there not one in there what? already? I don't think so. Not on... Making it less bright helped a lot. It's less sharp. What do you think? Was that enough? Or do you want to do you want to duck it with the kick a little bit? I think it's good because it still needs to be audible. I like the sound and it complements nicely with the main synth, with the main synth. It's amazing what just a, a little bit of EQ will do. Yes. This sounds like a haze, like a shh on top of everything. And now just this turned into a mixing tutorial. How about that? Which is kind of what we're doing. Like in addition to speeding it up, we're rebalancing it to, and I feel like changing the tempo re required mix changes, right? It required I things would say to be. It always does. Yeah. Yes. 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 And you know, even if you're if you're still working on a track, and you're like, maybe I should make it faster, maybe I should make it slower. If you change the tempo, you're going to make different decisions about 
compressors, anything time-based. Obviously, if you're not using synced delays, you're going to have to adjust your delay times. You might have to change your reverb tails like to be shorter or or what or longer depending on the speeding up or slowing down like all of that changes i mean and that's yeah that's another thing to consider here i haven't noticed any time-based stuff that needed to be adjusted yet but like we you know if you're going to really get into the details and we're not going to go as deep as i'm going to suggest right now like probably even revisiting your compressor attack and release might be a thing depending on what you're compressing right like I changed the shape of the kick drum with a transient designer. I should also be looking to see what the compressor is doing. Or you could just EQ the kick drum as well. There's many, th many yeah, ways the, the of, first, of, the first of, of way, getting what you want. The, right? fir the first way was also good. I'm, that kick drum sample we're using is a highly processed compressed sound already. We, we didn't need, need to do a lot of radical compression Correct. to it. And also the, the kick isn't, speeding up or slowing down it's just playing faster so anyway hi-hat now we can you know it's possible it's to i'm gonna split this so the the quick and dirty way to fix this would be that I'm fine with that. Because <laughs> no, I, I, I was like, trying to think, like, do we have to go through the trouble of making a whole new MIDI clip and finding another 909 sample and then program? I mean, that would, as, wouldn't be that, that hard, no, but, but it just, do we need, do we want to take that time? Or, yep. yeah, no, that's much better. But also, as long as it doesn't sound bit crushed or like, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not exactly, you know, because the way the beats mode and warp, warp mode is working in live is that it's, it's keeping the, the sample, it's keeping the transient intact. And because we're speeding it up, it's not adding grains of audio, which is what makes it sound glitchy and you know rough. When you do a lot of time stretching, you hear little artifacts. When you speed something up, it actually removes stuff. And because it's the beats warp mode, it's keeping the, the attack of the drum the way it's supposed to be. So it's just, yeah, it's kind of almost the same as if you speed up if you're playing a if you're using midi to trigger a sample and you speed up the midi it's playing the sample more often you're not you're not compressing the length of the the hi-hat that much in this case so it sounds clean and sharp and now i'm i'm reducing this envelope so i can it's literally like changing the decay on the on the sampler or whatever let's see if that works Can you mute it? I just want to see if the volume is right. Oh, that's the wrong one. I think it's good. Put it in. Now it's switched back to just the close. So the only place we need to switch it is when to do that is where it's um, the open hi hat is playing, right? So this section is just. That. Oh, was there something going yeah. on in there? Also, guys, if uh, guys and girls, if you have any questions, just let us know, and um, oh, they do. We try to we try to answer them, right? So I'm noticing something about the closed tie hat that that it where it is getting changed by the time compression. You can kind of hear those that there's that little extra swung hi hat there. It sounds unquantized and that's oh, the second one was fine okay it's fine i think it's fine man it, now it's gone away <laughs> like if i really wanted to be super precise about this i would go in and make sure that the transients for those little extra ones are yeah look it's so it's so quiet. It's hard even to see. Yeah, right there. That's that. There's live didn't even give it a transient. So if I wanted to like make that perfect, I would do that. Actually, not even a warp marker. I would go insert transient, right? And now it's going to recognize it. I don't know if we need to bother doing that. 
You can still hear it, okay? Um, I had no issue with this before. Okay. So I, I don't just, have an issue with you, it now. Okay. <laughs> to, to me, to me, it was good before. So if it, okay, we'll just know. leave it. Yeah. I mean, if you don't hear it, then it's fine, right? If you, I don't, I if mean, you don't I hear mean, the I, problem. I mean, at the end of the day, what you want to do when you update and track a track, you just want to make it sound more current, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and and mix it down again if need be. But yeah. if something is good, leave it as is, and no problem. Now. Is there anything else we would do to this to like, I mean, if we change it too could, radically, like it's going to be like a different track almost like, or a different you, version. You, I was just thinking that is like, we could add a vocal, we could add some stabs, but you know what? That's a whole new this thing. Ki the, the, no, this kind of track is meant to be like that. You know, it's meant mm -hmm. to be simple yeah. and, and just straightforward, you know, and not much, even though you can hear in this track, there is a lot of finesse. There's a lot of hi -hats. There, there, there are several sequences that complement each other. It's meant to sound simple. Yeah, and, yeah, it's uh, repetitive, and, and it's you get you got to get that hypnotic groove going, and then it's up to the DJ to work with it. Exactly, and in the, in the club, these tracks really work. Totally. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to uh, let's just take a little break here and hang out with the chat. And and That's and good. I, normally at halfway through I stop and and do this, but we blew right past the halfway point. So we're it's three four three TV. We're watching Selway's Techno Saturdays, and I am here with my good pal Christian Smith. And uh, yeah, we're uh, having fun hanging out and going over this old track that we made and going into some fine details a little bit, right? But we're like trying to update this for you know, this track that we made that we like from a few years ago to have it sound a little bit more current, right? And most of it is the speeding up, right? And then the kick drum and then small mix changes to make it work to make sure it sounds right at this tempo, right? But we're still trying to keep the the vibe, the original vibe of the track intact. We're not doing a remix, right? Now, there's a question here from Noob Host who is asking... Who is mixing your tunes and who is mastering them? Well, the first one's easy. Who is mixing our tunes? We are. <laughs> um, mastering, though, why don't you talk a little bit about the guy that you, uh, that you work with for Mastering for Tronic? Well, I've, um, I've had my label for about over 25 years now. So I've worked with many different mastering engineers. And I've been working for, with one engineer for the last five, seven years. He's a Swedish guy that lives in Finland. His name is Sid Inc. And he does mostly progressive labels, but I've been working with him for a long time and he knows exactly the sound I want. So he does all of the Tronic releases and all of my productions, and I'm very happy with him. Yeah, he usually and, does uh, a pretty good job. Yes, and what is very important when you work with a mastering engineer is that you explain to that engineer the sound that you want. You know, Don't just give him, here's my track, master it. But what you need to say, if you want something punchy or loud or warm, you need to you need to give as many instructions as possible to the engineer so that he knows what to do, what to do. He or she knows what to do. Absolutely. This is, something, this is something that often gets overlooked. And and a lot of artists, they just care about volume. But yeah, it's, there's so much more um, to mastering uh, than loud volume, obviously. Definitely. And then, I mean, there were a couple of, electro tracks i gave you for the series of compilations that you've been doing on tronic and pretty much like i felt like the if they didn't need as much loudness as like a bang and techno track right so like they need to breathe a little more so that's you also need to think about the style of your music and yes. the this tempo everything so when you're thinking about the mastering process cool that was a good question let's see what else do we see here luminous cloud is asking do you guys use swing or groove and i by groove he means like the groove uh that you can apply the timing that you can apply in live shuffle yeah well yeah swing or shuffle a qu a quantization yeah well, or not but um exactly. so you know in live specifically you can you can save and apply different types of timing and the groove that you can apply is both whether the the notes are moved over later or not, or, and also velocity information. But um, I would say, yeah, uh, we've done some pretty swingy tracks for sure. Quite a lot, yeah. And then sure. I'll say more often than, as far as live and the, the groove engine in live, most of the time, rather than use those, uh, the, the, the groove library that it has or extracting 
grooves from loops or whatever, I usually just move them over myself on the timeline or play them the way I want to. So, but the, the large answer is yes, we do think about the groove and the timing of the drums. And sometimes you'll say, oh, that clap is good, but it's a little late or a little early and you nudge it over. It doesn't, yes, you know, yes, yes, good yes. techno grooves don't always have to be mechanically perfectly quantized. Sometimes you want them to be pushing, pulling. The, the, the beautiful thing about techno is that there really aren't any rules. You can, you can do whatever the hell you want. Well, that is true. As long as it's banging and people want to dance to it. Although you can make techno that's not for the dance floor too. Um, There's another question from Ben Colts, who's another regular viewer. Is 128 to 130 BPM techno dead nowadays? It depends what kind of techno you want to produce. If you want to produce more um, melodic EDM commercial crossover techno, 129 to 132 is is the perfect speed. There's definitely slower stuff, but I would say the deeper, more slow techno is is more underground compared to the stuff that's really big and hyped up right now which is generally faster and ravier yeah it depends i mean like the the techno that sells the most is the very melodic commercial cheesy stuff and it's not fast <laughs> that's but, true right like there's a lot of 120 something melodic techno no like 130 yeah but the but the techno that is played at a lot of the raves where the kids go go crazy um, is like 150, yeah. 60 BPM. That's you know, what I was really, more or less really fa- Really, really fast. But uh, for some reason, that music doesn't sell at all. It's quite interesting. Yeah, and there's still, I mean, there's plenty of amazing tracks from back in the day that you can still play, and it doesn't matter if they've been remixed, remastered, made new versions of. Um, but from a practical point of view, and you know, one of the reasons why you probably you know, wanted to do this was you can take a track that's 126 and speed it up to 130 something, but then it doesn't sound good anymore. All the bass is too high and it gets too thin. Often, yes. yes, Right. And then if you use time correction, like, you know, you you can, you can speed up a track on a, on a, on a Denon deck or Pioneer deck without changing the pitch, but then that also doesn't sound good because of the, the the algorithm that's doing that processing. But also, but also back to the question, uh, you know what? There is no perfect speed. You know, if mm. it's if it if it suits you, if it, if you feel it's right, it's right. You know, Definitely. there are no rules. You know, if you feel 130 is good, 140 is good, whatever. You just do that. I'm just I'm just speaking in, in very general terms right now. But um, at the end of the day, the producer, if the, if the producer feels it's right, it's right. There you go. Yeah. Wise words. Cool. Um, let's see. I, let's go back to this a little. Let's give this a, a, another listen and see where we're at. I know we were just fooling around with that hi hat. Um, talking about groove, that question of groove or swing and shuffle. The that what's happening with that hi hat that you you're fine with, and I'm going to be like totally uh, obsessive about, <laughs> is that because <laughs> because of the way the, the 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 warping is happening, is that because those transients weren't there. Like, you know, live is playing the audio, those little slices of audio back faster. And the, the ones with the strong transients are perfectly on time. The ones where it didn't identify a transient are late. So it sounds like it swung or shuffled. And that actually could be okay, right? So that's just, I'm just pointing that out. And we want to make sure we finish f- fixing the hi hats, right? Checking out the the warp settings, making sure it's the way it's supposed to be. And I think this is where the the open hi hat comes in, and we need to fix that. Yes. How's that? Better. Shorter. Better. Like this. All right. So you like it at this? I have it at once. I have it at sixty three. That looks good, right? Yes. Yep, and the close is good. Honestly, John, I feel like this part, you can cut like a good eight, maybe even 16 measures out. 
it's too long for, uh, for no reason. But this the, the beginning the, of this like, break? Yeah, I feel the kick is dropped out for too long for, ah, for, for no reason. Okay. You know? So we could just leave the break, the kick in longer. That's correct. Yeah, it should be gone now, obviously, you know? Okay, all right. But, Let but, me uh, sit, hold that thought. We're going to go back and fix it. I just want to make sure we don't forget about all the hi hats. All right, so that should be 60, what was it, 64 or so? Yes. All right. Back to the closed tie hat. That sounds good. That little dee 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 is happening. All right, here's the next time that the hi hats come in. I need to make sure that I switch the clips over properly so they don't get cut off in a funny way. This is some trippy noises in it, man. That's nice. I'm going to turn that reverb down a little bit. It's kind of going in the background. It was a little bit loud. I think that's it for the hi-hat. Yeah, the rest of it, there's no more open hi-hat, so I think those are all fixed. So let's go back to that break where we feel like the kick drum is out for too long. And that's yeah, definitely a thing with this kind of techno. Like, you don't necessarily want to have these long breaks all the time. No, 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 no. Where definitely is the not. kick? That's more reserved for, how should I say, the EDM techno. <laughs> TikTok techno. Ravey techno. Tick tock techno. Tick tock techno. Please stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so it's after this part. So we have it like um, you can see. There's a there's a high pass filter, so it's going to take away the low frequencies of the kick, and it's also adding some reverb. So you're saying we shouldn't do this? We should just keep it in? We should push this another eight measures later. Like, like copy the part from before and put it to the right, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, what I could do is, uh, where is the... I see what you mean. This is we can just, fine, you know? right, we can take that you know, you know move what, John, it over John, here. No, 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 sorry, 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 sorry John. And then no, move no. it back. No, go, go, go back and just take the filter out. Don't filter out the kick. So you just want it to stop? I thought you wanted yeah. it to keep going longer. Well, it's kind of stopping because you're filtering out the kick, right? Okay. Uh, know what I mean? I know what you mean. So it, the, the power is kind of gone once the filter so is So do you want in, the kick to... Effect. I'm thinking like to have it continue and, and filter up like over here and have it to just slowly disappear instead of stopping i'm fine with that too let's try it let's yeah, try it fine with that too yes all right so let's see let's see if that works but then i think you should make the slope a little bit longer okay like start have, have it, start have, filtering have it, it out sooner very sooner exactly Ah. There it goes. Yep. Perfect. And like the kick drum never actually goes away. It's still there. Which is fine. I like that. I yes, like that. Me too. Oh my gosh, it's two o'clock. Did we achieve our objective, Christian? I think we did, no? All I right. It's, it's kind of it's kind of done, you know? The hi-hat sounds nice and tight now. Make sure, yeah. The level of the hi-hat's good, not too loud. 
I'm cool with this. Yes, me too. All right. Is that, there's another break? Where, where's the second? Was it? It's a short one. Yeah, good. Like there's a little one here. This one is just uh, filtering the kick a little bit. It's, so it's not really a full on break. Let's play that was just one here. All right. right, yeah, we'll, we'll do the breaks and then we're done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is a break. a break. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about the synth coming. <laughs> Good, right? Very good. All right, next break. This one, the kick drum actually does drop out. Nice reverb effect there at the beginning. Which synth did we use for the main? It's a for the main sequence. FM8. Oh, nice. I, I forgot. Yeah, we saw that. Good. Yes. Yeah. And then it's from here on in, it's landing. I don't think we need to mess with it anymore. And like, yeah, it's, it's just over done. five and a half minutes. I don't think we need to do any major condensing. All right. I guess the kick drum panned a little bit. That's an accident. Kick drum's loud enough, probably. I think it was good before, and it will be good now. Yeah, we didn't really... We just made it slightly punchier. We didn't need to turn exactly. it up. Exactly. Crazy reverb in the background. It sounds like it's nice. rattling. And that's it. We did it. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> this has been fun. It's been a nice yes. hour zipping right by. Good action in the chat. Good questions. Uh, really enjoyed hanging out today with Christian, going over this old track of ours and kind of refreshing it a little bit. And uh, thanks to all of you who are regular viewers. Thanks to all of you new viewers out there for uh, hanging out. And uh, yeah, stick around. If you like Electro next week, sorry, Christian, I'm just going to cut you out there for a second. We have our friend Carl Finlow. Electro Master, basically, hanging out with me, listening to your submissions. Remember, you can uh, submit your track on the uh, uh, feedback, the Selway Feedback channel on our 343 Labs Discord server. Link is below, should be working. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know the score. Get your track in before Friday so we have time to listen to them before the show. And yeah, we're trying to do a longer than an hour so we can get a bunch of submissions in. Uh, so. That's it. Let's say goodbye to Christian one more time. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And we'll do this again for sure very soon. We absolutely will. Yeah, we're still also, in addition to this, we in the past week, we've been working remotely in the studio, so to speak, on some new material. So that's a lot of fun. And um, yeah, we need to get some releases out this year, I think. Let's do it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Take See care. you next time.